Welcome back to Upfront. We're taking an in-depth look today at the recent surge in deadly violence in Milwaukee, and we ask, are sentences tough enough? Can local judges do more? Should they do more to keep the worst offenders off the streets? We're joined now by Milwaukee County's Chief Judge, Jeffrey Kremers. Judge, it's good to have you on the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Well, let me have you directly respond to what uh, Chief Flynn said on this program last week and what Chief Clark said today. They said that, uh, simply put, judges are being too soft on crime, that the sentences for, for dangerous people are uh, not uh, strong enough. Uh, David Clark called it a revolving door of justice at the Milwaukee County Courthouse. What do you say to that? Well, I think that's a misunderstanding and a mischaracterization of what judges do. And I, th I think what tends to happen in these kinds of situations is we have a really egregious crime, something really tragic or terrible happens, um, and then we look back and say, well, what happened to this person before? Were they in the system and what was their sentence? That's a very myopic way of looking at things. I mean, unless you pull a transcript from the sentencing hearing and you are put yourself in the, in the position of the judge and look at exactly what the judge was told, what information the judge was given, um, and whatever uh, arguments were made by the counsel, uh, the, sorry, by the attorneys and family members and victims, it's very, very difficult to say, was this sentence uh, a fair sentence or a harsh sentence or a light sentence? So I, I really reject those, those terms. And the other thing that I think we lose sight of here is we process about um, 40,000 criminal cases a year in Milwaukee County alone, 35 or so um, misdemeanor traffic cases and about five to 6,000 felonies. So we only hear about, you know, a very, very small percentage. So you need to put these sentences in context um, before you can really say this was a fair sentence or not a fair sentence. You would concede, though, it's probably hard to explain to someone who's been the victim of, of a oh. crime where, where somebody uh, committed perhaps a serious offense, wasn't in prison very long, and is now back out on the streets, that it's hard to tell them they have to put it in perspective. Absolutely. We're in a, we're in a, uh, a system that demands perfection. We, I would love to be able to say no more victims. We're never going to have a victim of crime again. And I cannot ever say to a victim, nor would I even think of saying to a victim, it's okay, you're the, one of the percent, small percentage that we have to put up with. We, we can never have that be our message. Public safety and victims' rights and victims' uh, concerns have to be at the forefront of everything we do. But we're a system dealing with human nature and human uh, behavior, and it's a fool's errand to think that we can uh, be perfect in determining that. So we have to do the best we can. I just want to say, though, that we have 47 judges in Milwaukee County. There isn't anybody in the system, there isn't anybody in this community who loses more sleep or is more concerned about the sentences they impose than a judge. No judge sits on the bench and says, what's the, what's the lightest sentence I can impose here? They take their job very seriously and consider all the information and the most recent uh, research and data on what's the best way to respond to uh, a particular defendant and their criminogenic needs and then craft a sentence that is consistent with that as well as the dictates of the appellate courts and the state legislature. Let's talk about what's happening in, in the city right now. We've seen this spike in violence. From your perspective, from the perspective of the bench, what do you see happening in this community? What's behind this? Well, I wish I could say, well, here's the answer yeah. or here's the cause of the problem. But uh, we had a, a meeting of the Community Justice Council Executive Committee last week, and the, uh, Chief Flynn was there, the mayor was there, the executive director of the Homicide Review Commission was there. And they had the data from, from this um, spike, if it is a spike. I mean, we, you know, it's very, very difficult to look at one month's data. I think I heard the sheriff say this as well. You can't really look at one month's data and say, is there a trend going on here? It's only when you have more months under our belt that, that we can try and draw some conclusions. Um, but the point was that all of these homicides that we've had since January, and there have been a, a large number compared to the right. similar period last year, certainly, um, but they're all different. If this were a, a couple of gangs having a turf war, you know, we could develop strategies to deal with that. If these were all domestic violence uh, homicides, we could develop a strategy to deal with that. But if you look at all of these uh, homicides in this first quarter of the year, they're all different. There's a domestic violence homicide, there's the outrageous tragedy of the, 
the uh, car accident, right. uh, homicide. You know, there's uh, two, uh, two young women fighting, and they call their boyfriends to settle the fight, and they, you know, pull out a gun. So they're all different, and therefore the strategies and the reasons that, that they're happening are multifaceted. There is no one answer, no was, easy fix. I was going to say that. That has to make it especially challenging because you, you can't say this is something we can do now that will make a big difference. You right. really can't say that, can you? No, you can't. And so all, I mean, I think what we're charged with doing, and it's what the Community Justice Council has been working on for uh, about six years now with the benefit of a grant from the National Institute of Corrections, is to challenge ourselves to make sure we're using evidence-based practices both at the front end of the system in terms of who we arrest, who we charge, who we divert, and at the back end of the system when we uh, get to the point of sentencing, are we giving the judges the best tools in terms of risk assessment, uh, risk assessments that are validated that will tell us this person over here, even though he's charged with a misdemeanor, is really quite dangerous. This person over here who's charged with a felony this time, he's really not as dangerous as this person with a misdemeanor. Um, and we need to have differential sentencing patterns to, to deal with those two types of individuals. Very briefly, uh, Sheriff Clark says uh, what we could do right now is put hundreds more police officers on the streets. From your perspective, would that make a difference? I'm not a law enforcement expert in terms of uh, crime investigation. Um, you'd have to ask, I think uh, Chief Flynn would be the person to ask whether that would make a difference. Um, I do know that, you know, I've heard comments from people in the community that, oh, we're, you know, we shouldn't give uh, these, uh, these violent criminals uh, diversions and deferred prosecution agreements. And I just want to say, take this opportunity to say, we do not do that. Despite those kinds of criticisms, that doesn't happen. Um, and I think we need to make sure we understand what's going on in the criminal justice system, which is that we now, uh, well, we have for some time said, those kinds of programs, those kinds of alternatives to incarceration are not for violent offenders, and we're not putting violent offenders in there. We're using those programs for low-risk, low-need people who we can safely divert without raising the public safety issues and save our, our most expensive resource, which is jail or prison, for the people that really scare us and that are dangerous. Milwaukee County Chief Judge Jeff Kremers. We Appreciate your time today. Thanks very much for being on the program. Thank you. Our political reporter is on the road to 2016 with Governor Walker, who is promising to change the tone in Washington if elected. That's coming up next on Upfront.